Today we're going to take a look at a 1344Q PVM from that recent haul of PVMs I made. And we're going to connect it with this BNC to VGA cable to a Mr. FPGA. So the VGA is connected to the Mr. Now we're going to get our RGB and sync signals connected. And we need to make sure we have composite sync set in our Mr. I and I. If you look here, I'm going to put a white border around the screen and you can see we have some tilt issues along with some horizontal and vertical sizing issues that we need to get in here and calibrate. So the BNC connections need to come back off and you'll have three screws on either side. You need to remove those three and then on the back we'll have four, two at the bottom and two on the inside of that input panel look at me point those out watch out Vanna White now we'll just remove these rear four screws okay with all ten screws removed we can pull back on that cover and then up and out and out of the way and we get a little glimpse the inside there's a look at that neck board that H stat cover has a bread tie holding it on which is interesting but when we look inside here, everything's clean. There's a sticker actually on that frame that says the tube itself was replaced in 2000. So although these 1344Qs are getting old, it's good to know this one had a new tube in 2000 and was likely serviced at the same time. Now that we're connected to the mister again, we can go ahead and fire it on and open up 240p test suites. We can get a grid pattern on the screen. So I just recently seen a post on Reddit on CRT gaming of a guy who fried components in his neck board by using a metal screwdriver. So I ordered this ceramic tipped trimming set and it was less than 10 bucks and it's, you know, a peace of mind that's well worth the money. For whatever reason, I couldn't find a 1344Q service manual, but the 1440QM is the European variant. And today we're going to focus on this bottom right hand group of pots that controls geometry and also this horizontal positioning pot. So I'm glad I ordered the full set of these screwdrivers because the Phillips seems too small. So I end up using the flathead and it works well with all these pots. But we're going to go ahead and get started with the horizontal sizing. So I'm going to bring footage in of another angle. And unfortunately, my expensive camera don't know when the hell to focus. But my phone camera does just fine. But you can see which pot I'm tweaking on up here in that left-hand corner. And I'm just getting a general, you know, sizing on the screen so I can move on to uh, adjusting that yoke. Now I'm stretching out that vertical size. Now you can see we got the horizontal and vertical sizing down pretty well, but we need to bring that left corner down by turning that yoke. I'm going to crack that yoke nut loose. You can see that that screwdriver is slightly magnetized and what it does to the picture. With that yoke loose, we can get our hand in here and carefully adjust that yoke till we get that image nice and straight. And we can get our bald head in front of that camera a few times. Oh, yeah. And once we're happy with the positioning, we can go ahead and clamp that nut back down. But remember, just lightly. I mean, this is a glass tube we're clamping it to. You don't want to crack that or cause any undue stress on it that will crack over time. Now I'm just further tweaking in that vertical and horizontal size. Here's a look at that service sticker. New tube in September of 2000. Now, if we take a look in that chassis board, we need to find that horizontal positioning pot. If you look tucked behind those wires back there in the middle, right where the arrow is, that's what we need to tweak. Here's a better view of it. 
It was kind of hard to get this screwdriver down in there because of the angle. The frame and the yoke was in the way, but I didn't need to turn it but a fraction of a turn. Here, I'm just bumping it to the right a hair more. And right here, the image was good enough to leave alone, but knowing me, I had to get in there and double check the static convergence just to see, you know, if things truly were lined up perfect. So I play with this for a minute and then I figure, yeah, I might as well adjust that focus, make sure we're in good focus. You know how it goes. So that focus pot, you can access it through the hole in the back of the neck board, or you can access it from the front. Um, my screwdriver kept slipping, so I'm just getting my hand in there and turning that knob. You can see it shift from focus to out of focus right there. It's pretty dang sharp, so that's where I leave it. Now I want to adjust that bow pot because you can see the right and left edge are bowing inwards just a little bit. So I want to bring those back out. And just because I'm me, I can't leave good enough alone. So I got to go ahead and play with every other pot in that corner. And I'm just going to speed through that. I mean, basically I'm just making sure them pots work and giving a little bit of tweak if they need it. But I could have stopped before going through all these, but you know how it goes. Damn it. Oh yeah. And sometimes you need to listen to that voice in your head. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. And once I reached tinkering exhaustion levels, I called it good enough and decided to button it up and run some scrolling test patterns. Now this recording makes it look like there's some warpage, but in real life there's not. It's the angle of the video. And having a PVM will really spoil you with the geometry and just the overall image quality. It's really made me critical about consumer CRTs. So here I'm going to load up a few game cores and just run some footage for a minute before I come back with my final thoughts. I had to edit out the audio because I was watching my niece and she had some annoying ass blippy going on in the background. So you're welcome. So like I've explained on my channel before, if anybody's followed my videos, I've been looking for a PVM or PVMs for several years and this is my first example of that. And is it worth it? Absolutely. Um, does it meet my expectations? Then some. Like I said, the, the image quality, it's like a whole nother technology compared to consumer sets. And even though it's hard to find them nowadays, keep your eyes peeled because it is worth it. I got two Ikigamis in great shape, both functioning great. I might look at one of them next, or I might pull out a 1341 Sony PVM that has a tiny amount of vertical squishing of the image. I don't know if it's a pot or capacitor, but Besides those, I have several other 1341s I need to look at and a few Panasonics. Maybe this video will help someone out, maybe not. Maybe someone's got one of these and needed to tweak that picture in, but 
wasn't quite sure of the process. If not, somebody will find it interesting. One or two people maybe, hopefully. So here's where it's set up now. I have Mr. Outputting RGB to the PVM and the PVM outputting RGB through a transcoder. And then I have component going from the transcoder to this 27 inch consumer Sony. And you can see just how much better Street Fighter looks on the PVM. It's, it's pretty dang amazing. And on that note, just like that, that's gonna wrap this one up. Don't forget to like and subscribe.